Hey guys, welcome to another episode of the Wednesday Checkup. Today, I wanna to tell you about a really interesting patient encounter I had just the other day, and then we're gonna follow up that story with one of my favorite segments, Mail Time. You ready? My nurse rooms the patient, takes all the vitals, brings all the information, including the chief complaint to me, tells me that the patient has normal vital signs, normal blood pressure, pulse, uh, high 90s, that he's a mid 60 year old male, that the breathing rate is normal, and that the patient's chief complaint is that there's this redness surrounding the right foot that the, the patient is worried about, that the antibiotics haven't really, that they haven't really seen an improvement in the redness of the right foot, despite using antibiotics for the last 48 hours. Prior to walking into the room with the patient, I did look at the electronic health record and found that they have an extensive list of medical conditions and are taking a lot of medications for them. Hypothyroid, osteoporosis, uh, diabetes type 2, high cholesterol, atrial fibrillation. So I know that this patient does have medications on board and other conditions at play. It's important for me as a doctor to check that before going into a room so that I can see how maybe those illnesses and those medications can be factoring into the current problem. After hearing the story uh, about the foot, I asked the patient if there are any other complaints. Uh, and I generally have a list of uh, what we call a review of systems, where I ask a few general questions just to see how the patient's doing overall. Constitutional symptoms like uh, fever, fatigue, unexplained weight loss, uh, then we have the cardiovascular ones, palpitations, chest pain, then with the respiratory ones, shortness of breath. You sort of get the idea. The patient did mention that he felt a little bit more short of breath than usual. He attributed that to the pain and discomfort from his right leg, that he thought maybe he wasn't sleeping as well, and there were all these sorts of explanations he had in his mind for why that was happening. So I listened to the patient's lungs, crystal clear, no problem. When I listened to the patient's heart, I hear something that I didn't expect to hear the patient was having an irregularly irregular rhythm, meaning that it was an irregular rate, that it was above 100, and it was an irregular rhythm, meaning that it, it didn't have a consistent beat to it. Boom, 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 boom. That is essentially the beat that we would hear if a patient has atrial fibrillation. Now, I know this patient has a history of that, so it makes it a little bit more easy for me to expect to hear that, but a patient who has atrial fibrillation actively at a fast rate is dangerous. Reason being is the heart doesn't like to be beating very rapidly for a long period of time. At rest, your heart rate should be somewhere between 60 and 100. However, my patient was beating somewhere in the low 100s when I listened and I checked their pulse. I asked the patient, have you felt any palpitations in the last few days? Meaning that they feel like their heart's racing or beating outside of their chest. That's a very common way to explain it. And the patient says to me, you know, doctor, the last few days I did feel a little bit and I wasn't sure if it's my AFib, the atrial fibrillation kicking in, uh, but it went away, so I assumed nothing of it. I said, okay, let me do something. Let me get an EKG just to see how your heart is doing. How fast is it beating? Confirm that this is in fact AFib and we'll move on from there. And we sort of put the foot issue to the side because A, he's actively being treated for it, and B, the more concerning issue for the time being would be the heart. Upon getting the EKG, we found out that my physical exam was correct and the patient was having AFib. And he was having AFib with RVR. I know that's a mouthful. AFib is that atrial fibrillation where the top of the heart beats irregularly at an irregular rate but then his ventricles, as a result of having those excess beats, was also beating very quickly. That's the lower portion of the heart that actually pumps out the blood to the rest of the body. His heart was working very hard to, in order to maintain this rhythm. But this isn't normal. My patient's at rest. His heart shouldn't be beating that quickly. Upon further review of that EKG, I found that he was having segments of what's known as ST depressions. And what ST depressions, specifically on an EKG, signify is that the heart isn't getting enough blood and it's suffering. It's essentially being choked out. We call this a type two MI, which is a type two heart attack, when the heart is beating so fast that it's not getting enough blood because it's being overworked and there's actual damage to the muscle tissue of the heart. So I told them that we have to call 911 and we have to get them sent over to the hospital in order to contain this rate, slow the rate down, and then figure out what our long-term plan is gonna be. Now, this was very stressful because the patients started getting emotional, they started getting worried and upset because they thought they were coming in for their foot, but here we are diagnosing them with a heart attack. 
My patient ended up going to the emergency room. Uh, they gave him IV medications. They made sure that the rate subsided, that the enzymes that were leaking from the damaged heart started going down and the heart was improving. And once that started happening, uh, they had a cardiovascular doctor see the patient and decide what the plan was gonna be moving forward. And part of that was to increase the dosage of one medication and decrease the dosage of another and then have them follow up in one week with that same cardiologist. The point of this being is that as a doctor, you never know what to expect, especially at a family medicine office. I had a patient on my schedule for an infected foot and here I am diagnosing with a heart attack that they were walking around with. They actually walked a few blocks to my office. A mistake I see a lot of young doctors make is to get pigeonholed into a diagnosis. They see a red swollen foot uh, on their screen. They only look at that body part and they say, okay, well, here's a diagnosis for this. And they forget that there's a whole person sitting in front of them. It's important to take that whole person into consideration when treating a patient. Yes, the, the complaint is about an infected foot, but the real concern was with my patient's heart. And the only way I could find that out is through a thorough uh, history and physical exam. Had I not done those things, just looked at the foot, said, okay, the foot's improving, you know, keep taking your antibiotics, let's have you follow up. I would have been doing a huge disservice to my patient. We have to treat the human sitting in front of us and not the ailment or not the complaint that they're bringing to us. The more you can do that as a doctor, as a person, as a police officer, really doesn't even matter. The better you're gonna fare and the better the person sitting in front of you is gonna fare. Let's have some fun and open some packages via mail time, courtesy of my mailbag. West Orange, New Jersey, that's not too far. Okay, oh, these are gonna be cufflinks because I could tell from the cufflink box. Ooh, these are dope. These are little stethoscopes. Ooh, look at this little checkerboard tie. If it matches, you gotta wear it. Woo. Easy work. Thank you for your wonderful gift. I think I look pretty fly and I can't wait to wear these cufflinks. Fort Walton Beach, Florida. <gasps> Snickers! <gasps> Did you get Bear his favorite toy? No joke. This is Bear's favorite toy. Little squirrels <laughs> that you put in here and then he has to get them out. Bear, I have a gift for you. Oh, they make noise. This is legit Bear's favorite toy. He's gonna lose his mind. Oh, it's a mug. Oh, me and Roxy sitting side by side. How did you do this, Husky Dad? Me and Roxy hanging out. Thank you, family. Okay, this one's from Texas. Whoop. Whoa. Swarovski pens with my name on them. But the only thing is, I'm not a D-O and M-D. I'm just a D-O. Problematic? This is from Hungary, and I've been to Hungary many a times. Not many a times, I've been there twice. I imagine this is gonna be a drawing because it's with some really heavy cardboard here, let's see. Dear Mike, I couldn't decide, so I did both. Hope you like it, best regards. What? This is by far the best drawing I've ever seen of me in my life. This is pencil, folks. Is this ridiculous or what? Dude, these are amazing. I'm gonna have these framed. I don't know where I'm gonna put them because it's kind of awkward hanging pictures of yourself in your own house, but these are amazing. Like this looks like me. Biu Smith or Bia Smith. Please send me your Instagram. I wanna put this on my story and share this with the world. Your art is amazing. I mean like you can't draw better than that. This is from Ohio. Okay, okay, here we go. We got socks. Get out of here. Socks with Roxy and Bear's face on them. Come on now, come on. I'm gonna wear these to work <laughs> and people are gonna judge me and I don't even care at all. Thank you, Kenyatta, very much appreciated. Stay being an awesome nurse. I send you a t-shirt I make at our small family farm. I guess you were large or extra large, so whichever one doesn't fit, feel free to do whatever you want with it. Okay, this is a, a very interesting shirt. Support your local beekeeper, I'm down with that. But why is the bee throwing up? <laughs> Fun fact, all my videos are now captioned in English and Spanish, so click here to check this one out and have a good laugh. As always, stay happy and healthy.